Whether it's packaging, the production of active pharmaceutical ingredients, or medicine producing companies, the pharmaceutical industry is one of the most strict and regulated markets there is. Which is a good thing, of course, because we all want to have safe medicines. The downside, however, is that it made the market conservative, without room for innovation. I believe that we are at the beginning of some big changes in the pharmaceutical industry. In this video, we'll talk about five things that will change the pharma market in the next 10 years. If you don't know me yet, my name is Amar and I'm one of the founders and CEO of PharmaOffer, an online B2B marketplace where API buyers can find qualified suppliers. We saw a huge difference in the attitude of pharma companies four years ago when we started our company, compared with the last two years. I'm sure it will continue. So here we go. Number one, culture. Company culture refers to the attitude and behavior of an organization and its employees. Many pharma companies have a corporate culture, where hierarchy defines their organization. This worked fine for years, but since half of the workforce are millennials nowadays, things are starting to change. Your company culture is the most important part of convincing new talent to choose for your company. Millennials don't care that much about the numbers that are on their paycheck and things like bonus structures. More important to them is that they share the vision of the company they work for. These people under the age of 40 want a company culture that gives them the opportunity to become the best version of themselves. They want to know what the company values are and if they share or overlap with their own values. Personal development is a vital part of an individual's growth. And learning new things can make them happier and more valuable. In fact, 80% of millennials say that personal growth is the most essential quality of a company's culture. These agile cultures are not limited to tech companies in Silicon Valley anymore. Also large enterprises started to rewrite their culture. Number two, politics. Looking back at the history of medicine, most pharmacies used to produce medicines themselves until, let's say, the mid 20th century. Today, nearly all countries rely on China and India as the pharmacies of the world. They can produce large quantities of APIs and medicines at low cost. Especially now, during the corona crisis, countries in the world have realized that they are quite vulnerable when they are entirely dependent on another country. Also, India doesn't want to be dependent on the intermediates and APIs from China. There need to be a multiple source for everything to work. In the case of a political conflict, a shortage, or as we have seen during the corona crisis, a complete lockdown, billions of people will not have access to their medicines. Countries will reconsider the current supply chain of pharma and will have to accept that the local production means that they will pay a higher price. I believe that India and China will remain the biggest pharma producing countries for good reasons, but there should be some alternatives. Number three, working methods. During the corona crisis, we have learned that it's easier than we had expected to work from home with video call software such as Zoom and Meets. It's almost the same as speaking your colleague or business partner in real life. In the future, we will consider whether or not it's really necessary to enter a plane for business meeting. Besides these video conference tools, there is a lot of software to work more efficiently, like Google Drive, Slack, Trello. These tools have already proven to make work more efficient and exciting to other markets. The pharma market surely will also benefit from these tools. Number four, marketing. Booking a taxi, watching a movie or listening to music, the way we're doing it now is entirely different compared to 15 years ago. The digital revolution has changed nearly all markets worldwide. It brought a ton of benefits to you and myself. Companies who saw change early have benefited a lot from the internet, while others, well, probably you know the story. Until now, pharma companies have always focused on sales, exhibitions, advertising and their distribution network. Current managers started to take online marketing serious and have caught up on their online visibility. Most of these people have used digital technology from a young age and feel at home on the internet. The future of pharma is digital and companies will invest to reach their audience online. We made a video about how to digitize your API business. We'll put a link in the description of this video. Finally, number five, sustainability. As everyone is becoming more aware of their ecological footprint, the pharma market will be challenged to reduce its pollution. The production of pharmaceutical products has a negative impact on the natural environment. 
Specifically, water pollution is harmful to animals and humans on a global scale. Chinese authorities have shut down raw material plants before, in order to tackle air pollution. Sustainability will play an essential role in the next couple of years in our industry. Not only forced by local authorities, but also from the bottom up by the new generation of people working in the industry. I'm curious what your opinion is on these topics. What do you think the pharma market will look like in 10 years? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow Pharma Offer on LinkedIn or YouTube if you want more videos like this. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you later.